But recently, over the last several months, we've had a stronger correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P, between more institutions dipping into crypto and Bitcoin as a whole. But you know, nonetheless, it's to say that we were anticipating should Bitcoin fail to get back over 40,000 and hold above it and run from there, for it to drop down as low as 18, 17,000. Now, you can go back on this full video on our YouTube channel. Uh, just, you know, you could type in Cyber Trading University Bitcoin and it'll be one of the featured videos right there. You could always like and subscribe right on our YouTube channel just to be as most up to date as possible with what we're putting out on our YouTube channel. But let me bring up the S&P chart now, because obviously from Thursday into Friday of last week and then obviously into pre-market this morning where the uh, you know Dow at least was down over 600 points. I didn't get the exact number for the S&P heading into the open here. But, you know, markets were down big once again today. Now, I had shown this exact chart probably about a month ago. Uh, it wasn't clipped out and posted on our YouTube channel, though. So that's what we're looking to do right now. But, you know, dating back to 1974, 1975, the bottom there all the way to, you know, basically present day. This right here, A, is a FIB channel between the two major dip points from 1974 and the 2008-2009 recession to this peak that we had dating back to the uh, dot-com dot bubble, the peak of the dot-com bubble. So essentially what this creates is an extended Fibonacci channel. Now, this is really good for swing trading, really good for investing. Uh, I'm personally more indicator-based when it comes to swing trading. Now, I say that just right away because coming up later on this year, if not even this month, if I'm not mistaken, Cyber Trading Univer University is going to be beginning to launch a swing trading course. So for all of our uh, members here, at least be on the lookout for that. But we're going to be talking a lot about this, a lot about uh, Fibonacci, a lot about different indicators. Uh, that's more of a, a me thing, more of a Josh Levitan thing than a Fausto Puglisi thing, right? You know, Fausto's not an indicator guy. But nonetheless, here's what I want to show you with this Fibonacci channel. This is the pretty interesting part about this. Let's even just start back from 2010 onward, from the bottom of the uh, dip point here. So since it's pretty interesting, we ended up seeing a resistance hold here pretty nicely. Resistance here got flipped into support. Over time, we ended up seeing a, you know, a gradual move up. This essentially is COVID. So we ended up seeing a major shake, you know, down at that point. It ended up going under and over this line here within the channel. It squeezed back up. Now, here is the discouraging part about this, if anything. And I got a couple of ads here probably in between. But okay, here is the discouraging part about this exact FIP channel. I would have wanted to have seen a false breakout at some point over time here. Because at least the false breakout shows potential buying interest. It shows interest above that price. Folks, we got zero interest here. I mean, it didn't even come close. So what happens? It certainly seems like the momentum ran out you know, within the market at that point. So we ended up seeing the beginnings of a pullback over the last, you know, several months. This is a monthly chart. So we ended up seeing it come back down to the 61.8% retracement line right here. And that was just over the last month and a half. We're obviously much lower from there at this point, And it only seems to be as if we're making a move down towards the 50% retracement line. So when was the last time the 50% was holding pretty nicely? Well, it was right back from here, 2014, a major resistance point. Like I said, it got flipped into support a couple of points here. We can't really count COVID. We can't really count COVID here, folks. Obviously, disasters happen and, and life happens where you, know, you happen to see major catastrophic moves that, that could affect the market. So that's what happened there. But just to say, generally speaking, that 50% retracement line was holding pretty well from like 2010 onward. And I know this Fibonacci channel was built, you know, within kind of this range here. But even look what happened, you know, beforehand, before around like the late 90s or late 80s, early 90s. That 50% retracement was holding pretty damn slick, wasn't it? A little food for thought. So if there's such a correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P, you know, it's more now than ever. And perhaps it, there could be a decouple over time, but uh, I'm not going to wait for that. I, I think that there's strong correlation enough to where we can anticipate the dip point on Bitcoin to be based off the dip point on the S&P. So with that, that brings me to my next set of indicators here. Uh, you have the EMAs, the blue and the uh, orange. Yeah, those are like met colors. 
New York Met colors. I don't know if anyone's a baseball fan. New York Mets, ugh, gross, disgusting. I'm a Yankee fan. Anyway, with that, though, the blue, well, considering we're on a monthly chart, the blue represents a five-year moving average. Essentially, it's a 60-month moving average, 60-period moving average. And then the orange is double that. So think of the blue as a five-year moving average and the orange is a 10-year moving average. I find this to be really important because even dating back to like the 50s or 30s, I don't think there's been a singular point where these two have even crossed. So that speaks for itself. And then for, from that point, otherwise, you know, there's been a several points where it's broken under these lines, of course. But with that said, that leads me to think that there could be a lot more room down on the S&P before we happen to see continuation on the way up. You know, there's a bunch of folks that I've been following on Twitter for crypto and Bitcoin who are, you know, quite bullish over the last, you know, few months. And, you know, these are people who had great predictions and calls over the last two, three years. I would reference them to you. You know, I, I would recommend them to you, to, you know, and perhaps in our chat board, I'll talk to them uh, about them later, the files I have on Twitter. But they were wrong. Obviously, we saw continued weakness within you know, Bitcoin and was within the S&P as a whole year. So it would not shock me over the next you know, several months. It could be the next six to eight months to where we happen to see the S&P pull back down towards that 60-month, that five-year moving average in blue. That would tie up pretty nicely with that 50% with that, uh, retracement line, wouldn't it? That, they're, they're pretty much there right now. So I would think of that as a major support level going forward, at least, you know, within the S&P. All right.